My name is Joshua and I'm Valkenberg Gernert. I'm here with South Dakota Mines football player Keontae Christian. How are you doing this, this evening, Keontae? Yeah, hey, I'm doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Good. Um, first, let's just start by talking about a little bit about the way you grew up. I know you were adopted in like middle school. Can you talk a little bit about your life pre-adoption and then kind of what it was like growing up after that in Aurora? Yeah. So from Aurora, Colorado, uh, I really grew up in a single parented home. It was me and my two sisters for a majority of my life. Uh, you know, it was one of those things where when it's just, you know, such a small family, you get pretty close with each other. So, you know, we did everything together, things like that. And then uh, it was eighth grade year, second semester, uh, just kind of, you know, through some to certain situations, it was better that, you know, I moved in with, you know, the family that I did, the Brockmans. And, you know, I was grateful and, you know, very, very lucky that they were willing to open up their home to me and, you know, welcome me into their family like they did. So, you know, I'm forever grateful for that. Sure. And you had quite a few siblings, too, once you were adopted, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I had siblings from my, you know, my biological parents. And then, you know, I gained three more, you know, two, two more sisters and then another brother. And I also had uh, three half brothers on the East Coast. So quite so a bit of family. Pretty big family. Must be a big uh, Thanksgiving get together when you guys are together. You know, it has its moments. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you mentioned a brother. I know you also have a brother who played or is playing football at Air Force right now. Is He's, I believe, a year older than you. Yeah, yeah. What was it like kind of growing up with him? Did he help? you know, kind of grow your competitiveness? You know, so we played youth league together, so like it was always competitive then, you know, uh, just at the youth league practices, you know, always trying to compete uh, against one another. And then throughout high school, you know, we played on the same side of the ball. So uh, really it was just one of those things where, you know, you're always trying to make a tackle before him or, you know, competing to just, you know, have a good day, things like that, or, you know, pushing each other in practice. So that definitely helped me and I, I'm pretty sure it helped him, you know, get to where he is. Sure. In the high school, were you at a smaller school or was it a pretty big school? Did you have to play two ways in high school? So I played both ways freshman and sophomore year uh, and I played in 5A, which is the, the highest classification in Colorado. Um, but my junior, senior year where, you know, we had enough talent, you know, had enough guys, you know, everybody played one way, which, you know, it really helped out, you know, when it comes to recruiting, you know, you don't have to worry about a lot of different positions and things like that. So played, you know, just just on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, it definitely makes it easier for like college coaches to trying to recruit you and trying to figure out what position you're best at when you're playing two, three positions at some of those smaller schools. So that helps for sure. Absolutely. Um, kind of jumping back a little bit, when did you initially get interested in sports and what sports did you play besides football? So I really only played flag football, you know, growing up. Uh, before that, you know, I thought I was going to be like a kid, like BMX or whatnot, you know. I had a little bike and that really didn't work out. I was a little too big for that. But um, just growing up, just played football, you know, flag football, things like that. And then in high school, that's really when I was introduced to track and then football. And then my senior year, I ended up wrestling. So what did you do in track? Were you a runner? Did you throw? What kind of events did you do? So I would jump in like the four by one sometimes, you know, it was a very rare occasion I did, but mostly I just did uh, discus and shot put. Were you pretty good at throwing too? What kind of got you into track at that, that late time, I guess? So our, our head coach for football was also the head coach for track. And his whole model was, you know, if you're not doing anything like another uh, spring sport, you're coming out and you're playing uh, or you're doing track. So um, my senior year is when I really had a lot of uh, a lot of things started going well for me for a track uh, specifically. Uh, I ended up on the podium for discus and then I just missed it for shot. So, you know, I ended into my senior year with a bang. Yeah, there you go. Uh, actually, a recent interview I did with one of the track coaches, he kind of said that track's a different sport where it almost always ends in failure. But you, for you, it didn't, didn't, so that's pretty good. Yeah, it was just one of those things where, you know, I had to take my growing pains early. And, you know, I finally was able to get a coach that, you know, I had a good relationship with and he was able to find the things that I was struggling with. And from there, you know, it kind of just took off near the end of the season. Then you mentioned wrestling too. Was that another thing that was kind of encouraged by your football staff or was that something you, you were really like, it's my senior year, I just want to try some other stuff? It was actually my dad. My dad encouraged me to do it. You know, it was right after the state championship game. He was like, hey, you know, you're not doing anything this winter. Uh, just go check out one of the practices. So went out there, talked to the coaches and, you know, they told me like it'd be a good thing to do before football, going into college. So it really gave me like a, a heads up, so to speak, you know, before I stepped foot on campus here. Sure, and uh, well, did you wind up liking wrestling or was it just something you were kind of glad you only did for one year? I mean, looking at my first initial moment in wrestling, it was, 
I was like, I don't know why I'm doing this. You know, conditioning the whole time, you know, wrestling constantly. But um, at the end of my season, you know, it was one thing, you know, I, I gained like an appreciation for wrestling, you know, for just the grittiness of it, you know, how hard it was, you know, uh, the competitive aspect of it, you know, where it's, it's you and another guy, you know, you can't really put any blame on somebody else if you, you come up short on the mat. So that's one thing I did take from it. And I wish I did it more often, so. Yeah, and then uh, just kind of going back to the football part of things, uh, in high school, were you, were you pretty successful as a team individually? Um, did you make the state tournament, stuff like that? So my freshman and sophomore year, we weren't that good. You know, uh, we were always like a pretty athletic team, you know, had athletes everywhere, but just couldn't figure out a way to put it together. Uh, sophomore year, we went probably four and six, something like that. And then um, my last two years of, uh, of high school, we actually went 24 and two. So, you know, a big turnaround, big change. And then uh, senior year, we made it to the state championship, but, you know, we couldn't pull it off, um, sadly. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a disappointing way to end your career for sure. Yeah. But obviously for you, it wasn't the end like it is a lot of high schoolers. You uh, eventually wound up here. What was that kind of recruiting process like? And did you know early with those multiple sports that you were going to solely focus on football? Yeah, so I always knew like football was going to be my main sport. Uh, it's the sport that I always loved, you know, it's kind of hard to step away from it. Um, and from the recruiting aspect, you know, it was it was a little harder for me, you know, just being undersized when it comes to playing football and things like that. Uh, one of the things that I always heard was like coaches would say, you know, we don't really know where to play you. We don't know where to put you just based on film and what you did in high school. So it was always one of those things where you kind of just have to continue to prove yourself. So going into like the recruiting aspect, you know, going to camps, things like that, you know, just trying to step out and do more things. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the difference between, you know, D2, D1, a lot of it isn't even talent skill based. It's, you know, an extra 15, 20 pounds and it's, it's an extra couple inches that winds up getting you the nod at D1 compared to D2. Right. Um, and since you've been here, obviously, when you first got here, the football team maybe wasn't the best. I know you started with a different coach before Coach Floor. So what was that kind of transition period like to switch coaches after, I guess it would have been your freshman year? And then what has that process been like to kind of rebuild under Coach Floor? So I think we didn't start the new coaching staff until the end of my sophomore year. And then um, for that, it was really just, you know, you're hearing new verbiage, you know, you gotta, you gotta buy into a new culture, you know, things like that. And for me, it wasn't something that was challenging because when a guy comes in, you know, there's one thing that you can do, you know, a lot of things that you can control, which is just, you know, your attitude and effort, you know, you can't really control anything outside of that. So really just getting into things, you know, showing up to workouts, you know, putting in my effort, you know, doing everything I need to do. That wasn't really the biggest thing, but, you know, buying into trying to buy into something else, buying into a new thing. That was uh, the thing that just getting a bunch of the guys together to do that. So if we can do that, be successful. Sure. And you kind of led that process from what I understand. Now, obviously, you're going to be a senior academically, right? But you're still not a senior athletically. So you still have two more years to play. What kind of, you know, obviously, this is one of the best years we've had in a while on the field winning at BH, which hasn't been done in like 15 years. Right. You know, what are you most proud of so far of what you've done on the field? Uh, what I'm most proud of is just, you know, my ability to, you know, go out there and play different positions, you know, line up in, in different areas and still be successful. Um, you know, being an undersized player, you know, you have to be able to do a lot more things just because, you know, you might lack height, you might lack a little bit of size. So, you know, my biggest thing, you know, I'm happy that I'm able to, you know, jump around, move around a lot and still be successful and, you know, bring that to the team, you know, bring my skill set to the team. Sure. But uh, obviously you aren't just a football player. One of the biggest things you've done on campus here is the creation, the idea, the vision for the Hard Rocker Ally Association. What kind of, obviously that's the only diversity group on campus. What kind of initially started that idea? I know way back in you, you and a group of players kneeled at a football game. Did, was that an idea that kind of branched off of that or was that something you had already thought about? So over the summer, another player, you know, the guy who, uh, you know, helped start the organization, uh, Mike Redlin, a former football player, uh, just over the summer, it's just something that we had talked about, you know, quite often. And it was something that was weighing heavy on our hearts. And we felt that, you know, with everything going on, you know, it was just a perfect time for us to, you know, try to bring awareness to the situation that was going on, even though it wasn't really happening in a city like Rapid City. So um, the whole kneeling part was just, you know, the biggest thing we want to do was bring awareness and, you know, bring people to the table to have a conversation 
And one of the biggest things that we kept hearing was, well, you know, what's next? What's next? You know, you did this, you did that. You know, what are you going to do from there? So, you know, talking to, you know, people like Jesse Herrera and Cassie Kasiba, you know, we all came together and decided, you know, maybe an organization on campus would be the best thing to do to, you know, be able to solidify what we're doing and, you know, make sure that what we have going on is going to last long term. So that's kind of where it stems from. Um, I, we kind of already talked about how it's a diversity group and, you know, how it was created. To you, what does the Hard Rocker Ally, Ally Association mean? You know, it's, it's really just a group that's, you know, built on advocating for, you know, you know, groups of people or, you know, individuals who feel like they don't have, really have a voice, you know, either here on campus or in the community. Um, one thing that, you know, Mike would always say, you know, uh, you have to advocate for your community and try to uplift your community. So in a sense, that's really what we're trying to do, you know, by having conversations on campus, you know, partnering with the Rapid City Police Department and their youth outreach team, you know, making sure that we're in the community advocating for those who can't until, you know, they have the ability to do so for themselves. Sure. Um, you're obviously you're from Aurora, Colorado, Rapid City, a little bit different, you know, culturally not as much diversity obviously here as there is back in Aurora. I'm from Minneapolis, not as much diversity here. So how does that kind of affect what you're trying to do with the Hard Rocker Ally Association? I wouldn't really say it affects anything we're trying to do. Um, there might be like a, a gap, so to speak, you know, like, like cultural differences that, you know, we always try to work past or, you know, simple understanding, things like that. Because, you know, coming from a bigger city, you know, moving to a smaller area, you know, people aren't going to experience the exact same things that other people do. So, you know, trying to convey, you know, where you're coming from, and, you know, your ideas, your opinions, you know, in a respectful manner. I think that's just the best way that we can kind of get over that hurdle of it, you know, being a, a smaller area or a less diverse area. Sure. And part of it's probably there's probably a little bit of education piece to to it where, you know, people from Rapid City don't necessarily know what's going on, you know, in other parts of the world and other parts of the country they just you know even being from Minneapolis I was there for the whole George Floyd thing right. and before that it was like oh this could never happen mm -hmm. where I'm from and then it did so it kind of changes your mindset oh yeah absolutely you know and it's one of those things where you know if it doesn't happen to you you know you can't really you can't really like speak on it you know so um, being from Aurora you know where there were like a lot of rallies and marches and things like that you know when you see things firsthand and up close you know it's totally different and um, one of the biggest things, you know, especially when we were trying to bring awareness to things like um, we wanted to try to get it to people and say, like, we see ourselves in these situations, whereas, you know, you might not see yourself in a certain situation. So, like, trying to, you know, get that across and, you know, make that point was, you know, at first kind of difficult. But, you know, the more that you can bring people to the table, the easier, you know, having those conversations and, you know, things like that can be. Sure. And one thing that you touched on in a different interview that I kind of wanted to hit on here as well was what would you tell somebody who is maybe interested in trying to help but doesn't necessarily know how? Um, one thing I would say is, you know, just you know, try to find a group or organization or something like that that's, you know, similar. And, you know, if you if you don't feel comfortable speaking, you know, at least go in and, you know, sit in and show face, you know, show that you care, show that you're, you know, at least willing to listen to something different, you know, hear a different opinion. That's really the biggest thing, you know, um, people aren't willing to sit down and just have those conversations. And, you know, you might not always agree with somebody, but at least sitting down and having those conversations, you can find a middle ground somehow. Sure. And, you know, you obviously you've done a lot here, you know, that's a very heavily academic focused institution. How have you been able to balance, you know, the academic side with the travel of football, playing football, plus, you know, being a leader in the community with the Ally Association? You know, one of those things, you know, Kind of just from in my my own situation, you know, I kind of look at it as like if it doesn't get done right now, you know, it doesn't. It's not always the best, but you know, I just put it to the back burner. I say, you know, I'll, I'll look at it again later. So you got to realize, you know, everything's not going to get done, you know, according to your plan or according to somebody else's plan, and you know, it's really okay for that to happen. You know, as long as you know you find time to, you know, make sure your mental health is all right, make sure that you know you're getting the basic things done, you know you can always circle back and finish things. That's kind of how I just have been able to approach things. Sure, and then um, the last couple of questions I have for you is for an incoming student, what would you tell them that would maybe convince them or make them realize that South Dakota Mines was a great place to be? Uh, one thing that I would probably say is, you know, when you're looking at like a school or, you know, uh, South Dakota Mines in particular, you know, um, look at what you can kind of bring to the table, you know, because at the same, like, 
there's so much that the school can give to you. There's so many things that, you know, you can gain from the school, things like that. But, you know, what can you bring to a community? What can you bring to the school? Because, you know, everybody has some sort of skill set. Everybody has something about them that, you know, you might not originally see or, you know, might not see in yourself. But at some point, you know, you know that you can bring something to, to the table that can, you know, uplift the school, or, you know, make the school better in some way, somehow. Sure. And then just personally, um, being a part of the turnaround on the football field and hopefully having a big couple of years, the Ally Association, the academic piece, what do you feel like your legacy is going to be when you are able to, you know, step on that stage and graduate from here? You know, kind of just thinking about it more, you know, uh, the best thing you can do for like your legacy is to leave a place better than what you found it, you know, so, you know, football wise, you know, I want to walk out of here, you know, look back from my freshman year to the, to the end of my career and say, you know, when I got in, I was able to make a positive impact somehow, you know, and then academically or just from the community standpoint, you know, uh, leaving behind the Hard Rocker Allied Association and knowing that that's going to be a platform for people to use and, um, you know, take with and, and somehow, some way shape what they do or shape something in the community for, you know, a better change. So just leaving it better than what I found it and, you know, hoping that somebody can use what I used or take advantage of what we put in place here. All right. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you joining us, Keontae. Thank you.